everyone, this is Judy with JLB Crafts. Welcome back to my channel, and if you're new here, thank you so much for giving me a try. Today I'm going to show you my process for making my own laminated covers. I've made many, many covers over the last couple of years. Um, this is an example, and with my light, it's going to be really hard for you guys to see the already laminated covers. But, um, so... For front cover and back cover, um, if you can see, so you this is just to illustrate the fact that you don't have to have a piece of paper that is big enough to end up with a gorgeous looking cover. Um, and I always make my covers two sided, so this one just has a generic print, it's not reversible. Sometimes I make covers that are reversible, for example. This particular set of covers, um, this is a back cover and this is the front cover, um, but they are reversible, so this would be the back cover and then the matching front cover. It's hard to see. Uh, but I do like to make reversible covers. Here's another one. Front cover, Happy Thanksgiving back cover, sitting around a campfire, and then this would be the, the reversible front cover, just a pumpkin, and it's matching back cover. And if you've watched my channel for a little while, you saw that I used this piece of paper in a dashboard layout spread relatively recently. Um, actually, I think it might even still be here in my planner. Um, just a couple different ways you can use scrapbook paper. That is not it, um, but it's a very similar idea. So I think that might have been in September, actually. So let's get started. Um, you can use any paper. I prefer to use um, scrapbook paper pads. That's where a lot of those came from. Or in this particular case, I want to use the some of the papers out of this kit from Planners Anonymous. Um, and I want to... I want to make a cover that I can use now in the month of November for uh, on my planner for Thanksgiving, but then long term it's going to be um, a cover for my cookbook. So the first thing I like to do is consider whether I want to make, well first thing I want to do is pick out the actual papers I want to use. This is a little art card, all the Planners Anonymous kits come with one, and I actually love to use these as a, a front cover on my planner. Um, I've just pulled any old um, Happy Planner cover, and this is to help me with measuring and sizing. So I would definitely need a backing sheet to go with this one. So let's just look through the pages that came with the cover, the kit, and um, decide what we want to do. And I want to make a front cover, a back cover, and um, a bookmark. So if I were to use this as my front cover, I would probably use a piece of this. I think I'm going to go ahead and just plan on using a piece of this as my back cover. And since there's no um, orientation, clear orientation to this, I could actually go ahead. Um, an 8.5 by 11 piece of paper is definitely big enough to make a cover without needing a backing sheet. So if, if I'm thinking this is going to be my front cover and this would be my back cover as of right now. Um, so that's tentatively a little plan on that. And all the Planners Anonymous pages, sh uh, books, kits, my goodness, come with two copies of each sheet of paper. So um, I won't need that second sheet. This one I really wanted to use as um, the inside cover. So Happy Planner covers, they are reversible, but usually they have um, more of a just patterned inside cover and I thought this would be great. The problem is there is a um, right side up for the little hearts that are in this tile pattern so I'm, I don't know about that because the one thing you don't want to do this is it's not cardstock but it's heavier than normal printer paper um, so for multiple reasons, you don't want to stack up too many sheets of paper. I try not to stack up two, three, four sheets of paper because um, sometimes they get stuck in the laminator. They get very hard to punch very quickly. So this is gorgeous, but again, it's got a right side up and an upside down, which 
adds to my stack up. The other thing about the Planners Anonymous papers that I absolutely love is the backside is always a beautiful watercolor, fully saturated, um, coordinating color. So these make great backing sheets as well. And my camera is having trouble focusing. <laughs> but, um, so I love the herbs in this, but I'm not sure um, how I would, I'm not sure about that one. This one has a beautiful pattern. It actually is somewhat reminiscent of the inside pattern on this one um, that to me doesn't really have a directionality. So this might make, oh, and it's red on the back. So like I said, the nice thing about these is um, they all match the color scheme. So actually what I'm thinking, I could definitely use this to bring me up to the cover size that I need and just stick this right on here and then the inside if this were my front cover the inside would be the spoons very um, appropriate red is not my favorite color but I just love that it picks up the red here and it definitely look, would match if this were the back cover okay so if this were my front cover and my back cover then the insides would be this which actually um isn't bad they're they're not the same color but they don't they're not so dissimilar that they don't go together so that's definitely a possibility and this means i'm only laminating um, a sheet with something glued in the center and one thin sheet um, but let's look for what else we could do so i think i'm definitely liking that here are some veggies um i could I could use, cut a piece of this that was similar size to this and use that inside the back cover. So that would be my insides. I'm not as concerned with the inside of the back cover. Um, so I'm not, let's see, I'm not too worried about that. Now the other thing I can do, like with Happy Planner, so the matching front cover to this is going to have this same pattern on it. So I could go ahead and just cut both of these pieces to size so that there's my outside, front, back, and here's my inside so they would match. That's, an, uh, that's a possibility. Um, I don't, two sheets of paper is okay. It's not too bad to go ahead and stick together two sheets of paper. And I, I don't foresee use, needing to save a whole lot of this paper. I don't foresee doing a, an entire spread out of it or anything like that. So maybe that's what I'll do. I think that's better than just the plain yellow inside back cover. Although that's not bad. Like I said, it's a back cover. Um, However, th if I, this could be re reversible then, no, it wouldn't, it wouldn't be reversible. Okay, so I'm talking myself out. It would just kind of waste this piece of paper, so I actually don't think I'm going to use that. Um, this piece of paper, actually, I'm thinking bookmark. Um, I love to make a bookmark to go with my pages. Um, it's green on the back side. And then you always with your kit, so I have, it's important for me to tell you, um, you, this is double the paper. So I always get the um, extra paper pack. And I don't, of those six designs, remember which one was part of the original and kit and which is part of the um, extra paper pack. But you, with each of those, you get one vellum sheet which I really don't have a use for, and one um, acetate sheet, which has these um, herbs on it. And they usually do match up, just not centered, so that does match up. But what I'm thinking is I could use, do a front, and I'm only gonna use about a third of this to make my bookmark. But I'm thinking I could use this on the back side. Um, I think I definitely want to do that. So, okay. So now that I've got this all figured out, we've got front cover and inside front cover, back cover and inside back cover. 
And then this will be bookmark, bookmark front and bookmark back. So now that I've got that all figured out, um, we need to start cutting. So I've got my paper trimmer. And the first thing I want to do, um, I need to do, we need to do, is measure not the laminate edge, but where the paper within the laminate stops. And for in this particular case, it is exactly um, 19 centimeters. Let me get my, just make absolutely sure of that. Sorry if you see the top of my head during this video. Yep, we are just a hair over 19 centimeters. So, I know I want the turkey in the corner. So if I go, I'm gonna cut this edge off at, so a lot of paper trimmers actually have a little extender arm. I don't know if you knew that. I had this paper trimmer for quite some time and had no idea that I could extend it out like that. Um, the only thing is it's not exactly square when it's extended out, so be careful of that. All right, so 19 centimeters. And while we're cutting, I'm just gonna go ahead and cut this one as well at 19 centimeters. And I'm looking at the inside because um, I think I wanna cut this side off. So we'll go ahead and go with our 19 on this one as well. All right, and then for height, we need, oh, we are right at 24 centimeters. Sorry about the glare, it's hard to see. Right at 24 centimeters there. So again, I wanna keep the turkey, so I'm gonna cut off this end. Or chicken, roast chicken, whatever that is. That's the one end I wanna keep, so we're gonna go 24. And nope, I'm not off camera, right there, 24. So there we go, that is the back cover, inside back cover, no problem. And it doesn't really matter which end I cut on this one. So let's go 24 on this one. Okay. All right, so there we go. Front cover, back cover, inside. All right, let's cut while we're at it, the bookmark. So since this paper does have a right side up and an upside down, it's not actually gonna be tall enough to stick out of the top with a notch and um, hit all nine holes. So we have a couple options. Um, I'm looking for one of the bookmarks I made. Here we go. All right, so this is actually, this bookmark right here is very similar to what I'm gonna do again today. So I wanna cut this same width. Um, this is great. I can stick a post-it note on there. Um, if there's something that's maybe a multi-week task that I want to move with, like a, a common one I do is when, when Happy Planner does a new release video, I will make um, notes on what I want from a post-it note, and then I'll just keep it on my bookmark because that, it may be a couple of weeks before there's actually releases and I want to start the scavenger hunt of trying to find them in a store. So it looks like I went about 11 centimeters wide on this. So let's go ahead and trim this at 11 centimeters. Um, 11, so I am actually looking though to see if my favorite herbs are on here to get captured because I could use this side or I could use this side. Um, it looks like most everything actually is on here. Sage, oregano, coriander. Yeah. 
So I tend to love the Italian herbs the most. Thyme is my absolute favorite. And right there is thyme, front and center. And a little bit over here. And rosemary is my second favorite, and it's right there. So I think my favorites are right there, followed closely by oregano and basil. Basil. So we're going to go ahead and go with this side. So get my 11 centimeters. All right, obviously we'll save that. And then as you can see on this one, I did use acetate on the back over the green on this one. So same kind of thing. I want to use this acetate and most of these acetates, if they're colored on one side, I have one that's rose gold. They're always silver on the back side. The problem with this one though is it's got words. So if I wanted to use silver on this back side, the words would be backwards. So we're going to go with gold. So again with 11 centimeters. Now when you stick these two pieces together, don't don't actually stick these two together because the tape runner is going to show through the clear acetate. So we just kind of need to line those up within the laminating pocket. All right. Um, you can figure out a lot just by looking closely at Happy Planners. So they go ahead and round their corners within the laminating pouch. So let's go ahead and do that. I have killed many, many corner corner rounders um, you use doing acetate and laminating pouches. So I, if you're going to make a lot of covers, I recommend you invest in a really heavy duty corner rounder. Um, I've had to use my scissors to round by hand many, many corners because my corner rounder died. So this is a crocodile um, corner chomper and this one does a great job. You can do two sizes, quarter inch or half inch. So this just flips open and I'm going to actually go ahead and do the quarter inch. So we're just going to round all the corners. So you just slide it in and chomp. So there we go. That looks like, yep, it matches exactly quarter inch. So that's just the diameter and make sure you, when you pick it up and lay it down, you keep going to the quarter. Um, I just about want to cry if I do three out of the four a quarter and then I lay it down and I pick it back up and I'm not paying attention and they end up with a half. So definitely don't want to do that. So keep going on the quarter quarters. I'm not sure I got that one quite in there all the way. In this particular case, I just went ahead and cut my tab out. Um, but you can attach a tab and laminate right over that. Um, I don't mind if my bookmarks don't quite reach the bottom hole. So I think I'll go ahead and um, just cut my tab into this one. Either way though, I can go ahead and cor corner round my bottom. And I'm going to chomp right through both layers on the bottom. And then to make my tab, so I, on this one, I have the tab to the center. On this one, I think I want to go ahead and put the tab on this edge. So I'm going to have to cut a little bit off, but this corner I'll keep. So I'm going to go ahead and round that corner. There we go. Now I have this, we are memory keepers punch board that is for doing tabs. Um, I like to use this for this one thing. I think I got this at Tuesday morning. I'm sure you can order it online. I'll see if I can find a link to one on either Joann's or Michael's or Amazon um, and link that in the description box. But basically what it does is it punches a big tab and you can decide. So I'm going to line up you can also use this as a corner rounder. I prefer my chomper. So there's a line here. I know you are having a hard time seeing it on camera. Maybe if I zoom in, you can see a little better. So depending on how large you want your tab, you go with large, medium, or small. And I'm just right lining up my rounded corner like that. So for this one, it looks like I went with, so it's going to punch right about here. It looks like I went with medium because if I do medium, it brings the punch to about here. Yep, looks like I went with medium. 
All right, so I'm gonna line this up with the medium, but, and this is both thicknesses together, lined up with medium, punched down. So it punched out this little piece here. Now then this side helps you cut off that excess. So you just, I'm pushing it all the way up, lining it up, bring this down, this is a little paper trimmer, and I just slide that across to where I stop having any resistance and it chops that right off. So the only thing I don't like, and I just got really dark nail polish stain on there, the only thing I don't like about this is um, this little extra whoop-de-doo that it puts in the corner. Um, Sometimes I get rid of it, like I did on this one. Sometimes I don't. I think in this particular case, I'm gonna go ahead and leave it. Um, and then I just need to corner chomp this corner. There we go. So that is it, that is ready. Everything is ready to be laminated. So we need to prep these next to go into the laminating pouches. The only one I wanna use any sticky on is this one. And the reason is um, I want to make sure I center that exactly where I want it to be. This is just one thickness, um, and these two are the same size. Plus, I don't want the laminate, the, the sticky, to show through the acetate. So I'm just going to use the tiniest bit, unlike my other videos that if you've watched, where I go crazy with the tape, tape runner. I just want two tiny little dots on this one just to hold it in place as I slide it in the laminating pouch. Normally I would center it, but I want to keep in mind this is a front cover. It's going to have a punch full of holes, so I want to slide it just the tiniest bit that way. That's just a personal preference. You can completely center it, do whatever you want, but I think once the holes are punched it looks just a little bit better. Oop, and then bam. It looks just a little bit better to me if it's offset away from the punches a little bit. So there we go, right about there. And I just eyeball it, I don't measure or anything. All right, so laminating pouches. I, every cover I have shown you, every cover you see in any of my videos, I have laminated by using two different five millil millimeter pouches. Um, so I put it in a pouch, I laminate it, I cut it out, and then I put it in another pouch and I laminate it a second time. That gives me the thickness of a Happy Planner cover. This, I believe, is about 10 mil. mil, 10 mil. I, my laminator was just like a, a 19 or 20, $25 Amazon laminator. Um, and in it did a great job. It has a setting for three mil, which is really thin, or five mil. And this is the laminator I used to use to run through twice. It's been through the war. I've had stuff get stuck in there and I've had to dig at it. Um, the hotter it would get, the more things would start to slide on the rollers and get stuck inside. But otherwise it did a really great job. Um, the next level up from this, from like a 20 or a $25 laminator, is well over a hundred dollars to do 10 mil and what mil just indicates how thick how thick the pouch is so i finally on this last amazon prime day shopping days i went ahead and invested um, in a 10 mil laminator um, and i will link that in the description box but i have never used it so you guys are here for the inaugural voyage of my new 10 mil laminator. And these are the 10 mil pouches. It's the thickness, like I said. So I've pulled three, da three out, one for the front, the back, and a third for the bookmark. And all these laminating pouches are pre-sealed at the top and I like to use that to my advantage. Um, I like to start with my pages in the top and when I would do the two fives I would put this pre-seal at the bottom and then on the first round and then put it at the top on the second round so I'm just centering that within the pouch because we're gonna cut all this excess off so there's one making sure there aren't any cat hairs or lint 
um, or any little plastic bits, they're staticky. So you want to make sure you get everything out of there. Set that off to the side. Let's do the back. And just getting that kind of as far up in there as I possibly can next to the seam. There we go. And it looks it looks straight because I, I won't cut this seam unless I have to. If I get it in there straight, I won't have to cut this seam. So it looks pretty straight to me. And then last but not least, the tab. I love dark nail polish in the winter. The problem is dark nail polish has a tendency to leave marks if you're not super careful on white paper. But like a pencil, it does erase off pretty easily. All right. Since I didn't use glue runner because I didn't want it to show through the acetate, you have to be extra careful to make sure and keep these lined up as you're putting this in the pouch. So I'm just going to go ahead and stick close. I'm sticking close to the edge because it it makes it easier for me to judge to eyeball whether or not it's straight. So that looks pretty straight to me. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to get my board out of my way and set up my laminator and get it heating up and I'll be back. Alright, this is what I ended up with, um, and these, I have to say, these definitely feel the same as a Happy Planner cover thickness-wise. The ones I was doing with two layers of 5 mil stood up really well. Um, they just felt a little different because it was a double layer, um, and every once in a while I would end up with a little bit of a bubble. It was pretty rare though. So I'm going to go ahead and trim these. I'm being careful not to cut into the little pocket that didn't quite seal. So if you look really close, there's a little tiny bit of a pocket right at the edge of the paper that didn't quite seal because the paper has a thickness. I don't want to cut into that. Here it's a tiny bit wider right here. You can see that little air pocket that's in there. Um, so I want to cut around that. And you can see here, Happy Planner um, has the same exact thing. There are, there's a pocket there, and they just stay outside of that pocket. So I'm going to speed this up while I cut these real quick. So for this one, I'm just trimming by hand up to the lamination edge. Next, I need my corner chomper. And I'm gonna stick to, if you look at Happy Planners, it looks like they stick to the same diameter, that quarter. So I'm gonna make sure I choose the quarter inch side as opposed to the half inch side. And chomp all my corners. There we go. But you guys, I am so, make sure I got my quarter, so happy I invested in this 10 mil laminator. This pouch, A, it cut, cut my time in half because I only had to laminate everything one time and not twice. Although, like I said, the double five laminate definitely works just fine. Um, but the 10 mil, if you can afford to invest in it or find a friend or an office that has one, it is, it is amazing. These are exactly what Happy Planner does. I, you can tell by the feel. So, all right, done with the corner chomper. Now the hardest part of the whole process. We have to punch these. Um, I have punched. There's a lot of buzz out there about the stems on a lavender punch not being as deep as a happy planner punch 
but the happy planner punches tend to break if you try to punch these. Now, I am not recommending you use your happy planner punch. I have, however, successfully punched most of my covers using the happy planner punch. Um, and I am going to try to do my 10 mil covers just like I always do um, with my happy planner punch. And the secret, the reason the punches get stuck, the reason people break their punches is that there isn't enough um, of a lever here to apply enough force to force the punch all the way through. So the secret, my husband and I are both engineers, so this makes a lot of sense to us, is to increase the force by inserting, this is just some folded cardboard, to force the springs to give you more of a lever and force the, sp force the punch harder down through the laminate. Now, again, I don't want to have anybody break a $35 or $40 punch. I'm just telling you what I do, what works for me, what has not broken my punch. Um, I recommend a Levenger punch or a tool punch, a, um, a heavy duty punch, or I have been waiting. Um, Crocodile finally came out with a, I think it's called a power punch. Um, that has a long enough stem. It does one hole at a time. And I've heard, I've seen reviews that it goes through laminate. No problem. I want one. They are out of stock everywhere. I, they're out of, they're not stocked on Amazon yet. Um, or at least last time I checked, they weren't, they were out of stock on, um, the We Are Memory Keepers website. They're out of stock on, um, Michael's and I haven't really found anywhere else to get one so I am going to get one as soon as I can if you have a source for getting them at a reasonable price please um, leave a link in the comments down below but I have not been able to get my hands on one yet so whatever way you go to punch first of all make sure you punch the correct side this is a front cover so it will be on the front of my planner so I need to punch this side and just so you can see, this ended up being pretty much exactly the same sh size and shape as my original Happy Planner cover. So I am going to try to use my little trick. I have not done this. I've done this with double five mil. I have not done it with a single 10 mil yet. But you're going to want to center it. Now you can see my two little normal lineup lines are missing because this is wider than a normal page. Um, but as long as you center, you should be fine. So I'm going to have to stand up to give this a lot of pressure. I'm not inserting my little cheater extra lever yet. But you can hear it trying to go partially through. It's gone partially through. But the problem is, even though I push this down as far as it'll go, I don't get all the way through. So I put my little lever in approximately three springs at a time, and it gives me more of a lever. And there, you could hear it pop through. Could this break your punch? Absolutely. This is not for the faint of heart. Um, like I said, my husband and I are engineers. If I break it, chances are good we can fix it. So I'm just going, and there a punch got stuck. Um, all right, let's see. Oop, and there. Okay. There we go. My punches. Again, this works for me. I cannot guarantee it won't break your punch. Please, please don't try this unless you are willing to suffer the results of a broken punch. So just making sure. I like that the turkey's down here on this and up here on the front. So I want this to be the back cover. So I need to punch this side. So I'm gonna center it as best I can all the way in. 
that's another problem that you'll have if you get too many layers um, is that it won't fit it won't even fit in your punch um, oops all right so we'll do the three on this end and just so you can see exactly what I'm doing we'll do the three on this end I'm just inserting this above in between the metal and the top of the spring so that when I push down I have more of a lever so I did those three and now I'll do the center three all the springs do is help the punch pop back up they aren't helping you apply force to push through what you're punching and I got one that's stuck sometimes that happens um, what I'm gonna do is take the bottom off don't panic if it gets stuck take the bottom off and you can see some of these haven't quite popped out and that's that's the bit that's stuck it just didn't quite cut all the way through so you can just work on removing these um, so it actually let's yep it sounds like somebody didn't quite punch all the way through so let's oops and I bumped the camera sorry about that And a bunch of these guys got stuck in the down position. So I'm just using my thumb to pull them back up. It just means the spring, it's stuck a little bit and the spring's not strong enough to push it back up. This actually happens with my big punch on normal paper all the time. Although this one seems to be really super stuck. There went one. All right. So I'm going to actually get a screwdriver to help pop these back up. So I'm just using the screwdriver as a little bit of a pry bar. There we go. Everybody's up. Okay, and we still have a couple that haven't punched quite all the way through. So you can see why you definitely, this is not, not for the faint of heart. Now this side is stuck, that's okay. There we go, somebody just popped. All right, I think everybody is punched all the way through. So let's pop these guys back up. There we go. Oh, one more. There we go. Oops. And I just sent little punches flying everywhere. But you can see, I am punched all the way through cleanly. One piece left to go. The bookmark. Now this is the most crucial. You want this to, you want to punch this. It's not going to reach all nine holes. It's only going to reach eight holes. But you want this, you want to punch it such that this tab sticks up not too far, but definitely far enough. So what I'm going to do is actually take a Happy Planner bookmark and pop my holes in, punch my holes in so that they all end up, the, the tab ends up at the right height. So I'm just going to look at where the hole lays when I line these up the same and put it in at that. Now this one's going in a little tighter. It does go all the way in, but it's a little tight and that's because I have the um, acetate and the paper. It's a little bit thicker. So if I line this up so that these end up at the same height, Alright, so my top, top punch is not 
catching much paper, but that's okay. It's going to be fine inside my planner. If you made it this far, there is one other um, hint I wanted to throw out there to you, and that is this is the piece of empty 10 mil laminate that I cut off of the sheet when I made this. This is the piece that was left over. So all I did was cut this slightly shorter than um, the standard cover. It's just slightly shorter so it doesn't stick out. Uh, and rounded the corners and I'm gonna punch this with my lavender punch. Just, I wanted you to see the difference. It just punches right through, no problem. But you can see that the mushroom stems are shorter. I don't know if you'll be able to see this on camera, but you can see when I line up the edges, the mushroom stems are a bit shorter. So, um, but the Levenger punch does go right through those as do many of the other punches. Now this, you can put um, glue sticky notes on here, um, or there are many uses for this. Um, it can be a bookmark as is. Um, you can just move it from page to page or use it as some kind of a separator but don't you know me if you've watched me before you know I don't throw my scraps away so this would make a great post-it note divider one other thing happy planner did at one point make um, these for you to make your own cover I don't know if they make them anymore um, I've never really cared for them because the picture doesn't go all the way to the discs, um, but all this is is a pre-made, it's a pocket, and it doesn't get sealed, so you can slide your own pictures in and out. It's very thin, so you're not going to get the durability, but you can slide your own pictures in and out. So this is an option. If you can find these... Um, I, like I said, I don't, I don't know if they make them anymore. I found these on clearance. Um, I don't think they were super popular, um, but I did get them out of curiosity to try them. There's um, the UPC code if you want to try to find them somewhere. So, all right. So we struggled through the punching. Let's go ahead and put these, actually I'm going to grab um, a recipe planner and we'll put it on there. So here is a recipe planner I'm not currently using. Um, this is going to be my back cover. But there we go, that pops right on. Here's my front cover. There we go. And then a bookmark. I think this makes an absolutely adorable recipe cover. Back, inside with the spoons. <laughs> bookmark sticks up nice and high just where we need it so there we go that is how I make my own happy planner laminate covers sorry for the ring light <laughs> hopefully you can see it I hope you like this video I hope it inspires you I hope you don't end up breaking your happy planner punch if you try this please please don't <laughs> um, if you did like this video please consider liking and subscribing thank you